Ladies and gentlemen, step right up. Welcome to another episode of The Goonery. Got a special guest for you today, Michael Preston, host of, what is it, Kook Nation podcast? It's, a, it's the Kook Center Hour on the Kook Center Podcast Network. Yeah, all there right, you go. Right, thank you. We have, we have the flagship show. Yeah, no, yeah, this is a big time, big time Kook Nation. Um, still working on getting an intro song here, so uh, just bear with my uh, shitty intro in the meantime that answers my question whether i can cuss or not yeah yeah that answers my first six questions <laughs> yeah there you go exactly. um yeah we can con oh i'm sorry cuss not cunt uh yeah that would fuck. be a cuss word though <laughs> yeah it was way ahead of that would be a pretty strong already. cuss word there yes <laughs> yeah it's a, jumping uh to the extreme already um but yeah yeah it's a freedom of speech podcast here so uh we don't want to Hold any. <laughs> don't hold anything. Don't want to suppress any. No, there you go. Suppress yourself there. Um, but yeah, I wanted to get you on the podcast here. Uh, you're a big gambling guy. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. Yeah, the eyes light up. Um, I am very interested in sports gambling, even mm-hmm. more so now that it's legal. In, my, in a lot of states, yeah. In a lot of states. A lot of states uh, yeah. Little irony here with uh, Seattle in the background. Uh, Washington, one of the last states to uh, want to there is a, yep, There is a bill in the state Senate right now, so we'll see how it goes. But uh, they have until the end of the session in a couple of weeks to get that to get that out of the Senate. But what's uh, the bill to legalize? Uh, it, would, it would allow in-person betting in tribal casinos. I heard something about tribal casinos. Yeah. Yeah. So only in casinos owned by Indian tribes. Uh, would they allow gambling? And you also couldn't gamble on uh, any collegiate team that is in the state. Uh, so it's probably better for me to not have to gamble on my Cougs. So it works out better for me that way. Uh, so that would be the only, the only restrictions would be you have to be physically at a tribal casino to place a bet, and you can't bet on any team in the state of Washington. Okay, okay. Lots any, of, any collegiate team. You can bet on the Seahawks or the Mariners or whatever. Lots unpacked there. Um mm-hmm. Tribal casinos is uh, Snoqualmie. Snoqualmie. There's like the Muckleshoot, Tulalip, uh, Emerald, Emerald Queen. Queen. Yeah, uh, those are the big, the big four right around here. Okay. Uh, then the further north and south you go from Seattle, and not too many east on the east side of the state, but further north and south you go, uh, the more you'll find. Okay, right on. So, your who's who of. Uh, Washington casinos. Yeah, of, of Washington travel casinos. Yeah, <laughs> right, I, right. I, I know them all from playing roulette once. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> all right, good to know. So uh, I believe they'll probably win that based on the uh, Twitter. Oh, yeah, no, it'll, it'll, yeah. it'll get through the Senate. I, it only, if it, I mean, the only stomach block be if it gets brought up or not. Eventually it will. It passed the House pretty handsome. Yeah. It had 81 uh, votes, so I'm not, okay. I'm not really terribly worried about it. All right. Yeah. See, this, this is my guy for uh, gambling news. <laughs> what's well, also news? Really? <laughs> that was my old job, so I have to know what's going on. Yeah, really on top of things here. Um, I saw one comment that was like, uh, "The tribes always get their way." So I was like, "Pretty that, much." That pretty seems like a very accurate no, do, uh, no, <laughs> comment. So yeah, they pretty much do. Yeah, mm-hmm. um, can't argue with that logic no. there. All right. Well, that sounds exciting. Uh, when will that take place then? Twenty. Uh, I mean, in theory, you could pass this year. The governor could have a bill passed by. The, or governor. the governor could have a bill signed by June, in place by July, and I'm sure the tribes would be set up to take bets right away. They would not want to waste any time with that. We could be looking at august to start to the collegiate yeah, pretty football much. oh yeah by the, by the, oh yeah no they would if as long as the senate gets a pass to be in, it'd be ready to go by the time the college football season starts oh all right well i'll start saving up um you can't bet on the cougs uh no do you ever school. want to bet on your home team yes, regrettably yes regrettably okay yes. it almost it almost always never works out for me so you yeah. you, you think that you'd know by going to the cookie jar that you get a shock like a mouse and a <laughs> yeah. haze, I would have learned my lesson by now, but apparently I don't have any, I have the intelligence of a mouse. So, uh, so yeah, so no, I do not, uh, do not proclaim to 
have the ability to stop betting on them in any, <laughs> in any capacity. Okay. Uh, I feel like, uh, you know, you never want to bet against your team and, uh, it's like a double whammy when you bet for them and they fall short. Which is exactly why I try not. So, like, when I do bet them, it's like the over-under, right? So, the number of points scored in the game. But even then, it's – if they don't hit that and they lose, I'm not in a good mood. So, um, it's also a good rule to not bet on your rival either. So, you, I don't bet on Washington. So, I, I just makes – because then if they win and they you lose your bet, then you're really – then you're really, really angry. Okay. Is uh, oh. so Washington is the Cougs' rival. Is uh, are the Cougs uh, Washington's rival? They would say Oregon. <laughs> oh. I, I still I still hear it plenty during Apple Cup week for us to not be a rival. So so smug those dogs. Um, mm-hmm. All right, all right. Well, that's exciting. Um, what? How's uh, sports gambling shaping up in the rest of the country? I mean, it's it's. It kind of because the United States is so you know broken up jurisdictionally, you know, and the Tenth Amendment to the Constitution gives the state so many rights that the feds don't have. Um, it kind of depends on where you are, uh, like in Oregon, so just south of the border here. Um, I believe it's uh, the state controls it, and it's only at certain tribal casinos and some states have the same rule where it has to be at tribal casinos. Other states have it. You just need to be within the state borders. So like it's not legal in New York, but it is legal in New Jersey. So people can literally just drive across the the Hudson river and park in a parking lot, open a sports betting app, make their bets and drive back. You can ride the dang subway over there too. So um, it just depends on where you are and what law has been passed in that particular area in places where casinos are a lot more prevalent, uh, you know, not quite to the level of Nevada, but in, you know, states where there are a lot more casinos like Montana, I don't know if it's legal in Montana yet, but they have a lot of casinos just in like strip malls and even some in gas stations where they can take, where, you know, you can take bets. But in Washington, the casinos are a little bit more spread out because they have to be on tribal land. So okay. it really depends on where you are and what's going on. But yeah, I mean, yeah, you know, it can, in New York, it doesn't really make sense for it to not be legal anymore, given how close most of the people there are to New Jersey and, frankly, how close a lot of people in Buffalo and other areas in northwestern New York are to Canada, where it's perfectly legal, too. So, um, so yeah, it just depends on what state you live in and uh, how things are there, how they want to do it. Um, here's a dumb question. Mm-hmm. Why is it illegal? Or, like, why has it taken so long to you know be legal um it was made completely illegal uh if i'm remembering correctly uh, there was a 1992 act of congress that made it illegal and only until some states got motivated enough uh to do it because i you know i don't know how extensive your knowledge is on it but like in the uk you can make bets on teams in the stadium so like i'm going to the sounders game and if I want, if, you know, if the safe Sounders played in England, there are literally betting stations inside the stadium <laughs> during the game that I could go make bets on the game. So That's, that sounds amazing. Uh, yeah, no, I know it does. So in a lot of countries it is legal because it's just seen as another form of gambling. And in theory, if it's legal, you have better controls over it because the interested parties, you know, gambling apps and casinos are not interested in anything you know, somebody taking cash under the table to shave points or whatever else. If it's illegal, it's a lot easier to do that because you have no regulation right. running it whatsoever. Sure. Um, but the because the major sports leagues in this country and the NCAA were so worried about point shaving, and there have been a couple of scandals over the years. I can't remember the name of the ASU point guard who was point shaving back in the 90s. Um, there's always kind of been rumblings around the Hawaii football team that they've done it a few times. Um, and professionally, you know, there's always, because it was illegal, there was always, you know, your high, vo- high value sports bettors online were kind of pissed when they thought they saw something that was a little shady. But um, it got overturned by a Supreme Court case a couple of years ago. And that, I mean, that just immediately the blockade fell. And I think New Jersey was right on top of it. They were ready to go because they were the ones who sued. Uh, to get the law overturned. And basically what they said was it's a state issue. You can't determine, you can't tell us what we can and cannot do on a state issue. And 
that there were other numerous legal reasons I can't think of as to why they got the case or what they got the law returned. But basically what they said was constitutionally, you can't tell us what to do with this. Uh, and the Supreme court agreed, if I remember right, seven, two. Oh, wow. All oh, right. Yeah. No, I got all the information. <laughs> all right. What, what haven't we, uh, <laughs> I'll let you drink your water there. You gotta, um, you always got to stay hydrated when you're betting, you know? Yeah. Yeah. You always got to stay hydrated. You got to stay focused. Okay. So, before you could bet sports in like pretty much just Nevada or could you bet in a few other places? You could bet in Nevada. And I think it, so part of the law in 92 was, this is also my transition into sports betting right now. But it's, <laughs> <laughs> if you haven't picked up on that. Oh yet. yeah. So, yeah. so when it became, so when they made the law, any state where it was still legal, they allowed, they grandfather claused in. For sure. So if you wanted to still do it, you could, but Nevada was the only state that wanted to. So, um, because probably at the time they were really the only state with a really vested interest in doing it. Cause I, you know, they were the only ones with a high volume of casinos that were a yeah. tourist destination. I mean, Vegas in 92 wasn't nearly the destination it is now, but even back then it was, it was a lot of tourists and they wanted a way to draw them there. And so they kept it legal. Um, and because they were already so depraved with all the gambling you could do oh in that God, state. Yeah. Um, it just didn't matter at that point. So you, I mean, there, I think it was like Nevada, Oregon, Delaware. I think Montana was one of them and there were a couple others, but they all just kind of decided they, they didn't want to do it. And so they got rid of it and not that they'd really had it anyway, but um, they just decided not to flex their muscle on it. I, New, New Jersey might've been one of them, but I know for sure that uh, the former governor there had wanted it to be legal uh, for so long because he rightly saw it as uh, it's basically a way if you taxed each transaction at, you know, half a percent, I think they announced that New Jersey, the state of New Jersey had like a $2 billion handle this last year, which is an asinine amount of money. Oh my God. And they're making a ton of tax money off it. And so it's, it's just, I mean, it's just it's free money. So you might as well, right. like part of the reason why we gets legalized in so many states now is because it's just, well, it's a it's tax crap out of it. It's free money. So you, I mean, you do it. Yeah. That's, I mean, that's my stance on drugs. Like you might as well just make it legal. Like it's just, and sports betting is pretty much a drug for a lot of people. So. Right. Yeah. And, thankfully not quite for me, but for a lot of people, I mean, they, anything, anything that you, Oh, no, sure. And I, and I passionate I, about as a drug. Yeah. And I, yeah, and I, and I totally <laughs> understand the perspective of some people, you know, like you can, you can have a gambling addiction the same way you do. Sure. Oh yeah. With anything else. I know a couple of people who are in gamblers anonymous and it's, it's an easy thing to get addicted to, but Ooh, let's uh, go, go finish that thought. And then, I'll Oh yeah. But you don't, you don't keep something illegal for the 5% of the people that it's not, that it's going to really affect them. I know it's just a few bad apples that seem to ruin it. Uh, tangent, uh, Gamblers Anonymous always, you know, see those commercials. Uh, what's that? Is that like Alcoholics Anonymous? Or yeah, yeah. Like it's, just, it's just the same thing. Yeah. Same thing. Same, same concept. Replace mm-hmm. people who gamble. alcohol with gamble. Yep. People who gamble. Mm-hmm. Yep. I mean, you see it. You see There's it like degeneracy in that. Place. Oh, no. I know. I mean, it's, it's, I mean, I'm sure like Pete Rose. Goonery. Pete Rose should be in it for sure. Yeah. Uh, but no, I mean, let's say it's, if you watch the World Series of Poker, like every, they do like a PSA. Right. Every That's other right. commercial yeah. break with that fat dude who's the head of Harrah's and he's like, you know, we don't want you in our casinos if you have a problem. No, yes, you do. Yeah, you yes, do. you do. Yeah, Almost you don't discriminate. Do because they're the ones spending money and they're not taking the free drinks. That's why you want them in. <laughs> I'm the one not spending money and taking the free drink. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like my dad. You want me in your casino? Yeah, yeah. Um, okay. Is there any like ethical issue with uh, sports gambling that we should be aware of? I mean, like in terms of what? Like in terms of uh, right? What? Well, no. I mean, I mean, yeah. Sure. I mean, I can. You know, you can always think of ethical issues. To I don't know. Is there is like fixing? Is that? I mean, in theory, I mean, in theory, no. I mean, that's part of the yeah. reason, again, why you would legalize it and why I always thought, like, hosting events in Vegas was kind of this, like, bugaboo, right, where you said, well, there's gambling there. Well, wouldn't you want it to be in the place where they've literally got 30 cameras trained on every betting window there is and every – if they even get a – 
those because those casinos know that there's still underground sports betting in Vegas, right? Like it's not going on at the casinos, and they still know what's going on in those because it's their job to know what's going on because they're right. protecting them. I mean, like the the casino is unlike so many, uh, you know like businesses in the United States where there could be so much very you know, aware or you got to worry about, you know, like our transportation costs and right, whatever yeah. else. like no money in money out. That's what I'm worried about. And it, cause it's just a straight exchange of cash for a chance at stuff. Yeah. And you're going to be aware if there's any, you know, any underhandedness going on with something. So, I mean, you could, but again, the issue is, is that if it's illegal completely, mm. a greater risk of that happening because there are more back channels to work that way. And you don't have like a regulatory body like in Nevada that's so hefty, like the Nevada Gaming Commission that, you know, they know what, the, in theory, they know, you know, they count out of the corporate casinos an awful lot, but they, in theory, should know what the hell's going on. And so they... You know, I, I know a lot of people poo-poo federal or state regulation on things, but in the case of, you know, like match fixing or point shaving or anything else like that, uh, state regulators would actually work better in that regard if their entire job is just to right. make sure that things are on the up and up on a event by event basis. Yeah. Okay. So let's take a look at the landscape here because it's uh, shifting. Um, okay. So you got people gambling against sports. Um, it just seems like it brings a lot more enjoyment and like entertainment Mm -hmm. to the masses. Um, I I really don't get like, why is it? I don't know. I'm sorry. I'm kind of trailing off on the thought here, but I, no, you're I'm fine. so no. baffled by like how you, you mean like why, like why anybody would be against it or like why anybody yeah. would. Yeah. I, I mean, it's a vice, you know, like we talked yeah. about earlier. It's, it's like any drug. It's like alcohol. It's like marijuana and, and smoking. And I know, you know, I mean, even caffeine. I mean, people can excuse me, the shot that all they want, but I mean, it re- I mean, it really is. It's, it's, you know, if, for some people who have addictive personalities, it, it can yeah. be dangerous. And then that's not good. And that's why you have organizations like Gamblers Anonymous. And yeah. there could always be, when gambling is legal, there could always be more outreach being done uh, to people who have a gambling problem and who are, who are literally gambling their lives away. That's never a good thing. You never want to see that. So I can understand why people are against it. But again, you can't, you can't just always protect everyone from everything. And I think in terms of serving the greater good, the additional tax funding from that, the additional good the money can do for local governments as such outweighs the possible problems with it. I think too, you know, again, we've talked about point shaving, but again, I think if things are, if it's legal, then it's not as big of a deal because you have state and federal regulate, not federal in this case, but you have state yeah. regulation into it. Um, and I, I think too, it's just, you know, it's always that idea of people want their sports to be pure. They want it to be, you know, like this, this, you know, like this thing on a mountaintop, you know, like my politics isn't in this, my money's not in this, you know, whatever else. This is just a pure exchange of I pay money to be entertained. You know, that's, yeah. you know, for some people that's going to see a play for you and me and uh, plenty of other people that's going to sporting events. And so I think like when the XFL started and they started putting, they started putting the, the betting line on the score bug, the over under and right. Right. a lot of people thought that was really gross because like it was interfering with the sanctity of this game. And I kind of went, I mean, a, it's the XFL. So, <laughs> so but B, on that. yeah, but B it's kind of like, you know, there are a lot of people who are interested in that information. Now in theory, you've got it on your phone, right? You don't just, you don't just, you don't need to depend on the score bug for that. But by the same token, for a lot of people, it's, it's that, it's that purity thing, right? Where, where sports is this pure thing that can't be screwed with and everything else. And I, I would hate to think that people have a, is fight. it a purity issue? Is that? Oh no. Yeah, de- no, definitely. I, I think people want to think of sports as like this, you know, again, it's like, it's like thing on a mountaintop. It, 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 it's, it's free of all like the world's problems because for like, you know, when I go to my soccer game on Sunday for the Sounders, like I can forget about everything for two hours. I don't have to think yeah. about anything else. 
that anybody would have a financial interest on the outcome of this game. Now, of course, everybody has an, you know, everybody in the field has a financial interest on the outcome of this game. They don't play well, they get cut, they get fired, or the owners lose money right. when people coming to games. Right. Uh, more, more direct, I am gambling money on the performance of human beings. And I think that's kind of, if you want to like go all the way down the seven layer dip of the purity of it, is that, you know, gambling on horses is, I, I find horse racing to be pretty barbaric at this point, given the amount of horses that have been dying uh, lately. But, you know, like, let's say we even remove that, that the tracks are safe. Is that the so gambling on an animal. bottom layer of the dip or is that the top layer of the dip? <laughs> the bottom, I don't know what it is. Yeah, and this analogy, I don't know if it's the sour bean cream. Bean, but yeah, <laughs> so, um, but you know, horse can't, horse racing is it's horses. They're animals. They're certain, you know, they're animals that perform services of human beings. Um, when dog tracks were still a thing, again, it's a dog. It's not a human, but these are human beings yeah. gambling on here. So yeah. I'm count and I can be angry at a human being when they don't perform the way I want them to. Uh, and my money yeah, so. be called a boss. Yeah, exactly. And so it's, you know, yeah, yeah. You can be called a boss, but, and so that, I think that, if you really like really wanted to get down to it, that's why people don't like it. Okay. And, and I mean, I, I don't think it's not who, necessarily who are these people. I, I'm sorry. I'm in my millennial Puritans, bubble. The I Puritans just, uh, is what they I are. The, yeah. The Quakers. They're on, they're on, they're on the oatmeal box. That's what they're, <laughs> yeah. on. they're on the oatmeal box. Yeah. The Quakers. Yeah. No, I mean, I, I, I can see it that way. And it's, okay. you know, it's, it's my hair gets more unruly. Um, you know, I, I can see it that way. Lost, uh, I lost a lot of credibility by doing that. <laughs> yeah. I, had, I had so oh, much good. to begin with. Um, but I mean, I, I can see it that way. And I can see why people would, you know, view it as even, you know, it's not necessarily something you, that they have to admit because they, they might not be able to drill that far down in their feelings on it. But it involves yeah. human beings. And that's it's an entirely different equation when it comes to ethics and anything that we won't get into here, but in terms of sporting events and gambling on them, they're human beings you're gambling on. So, but they're professional. They are professionals, but they do for a living. Right. They should be doing that. They do this for a living. So, can, I mean, the horse races for a living. The ho- well, the horse racing in a vacuum. That one. There is still a human being involved with the horse yeah. racing too. So, and um, a human being that seems to have very much control over. The outcome yeah. of that versus yes. but a, that human being a team is, sport type. That of human being doesn't stud out for a quarter million a stud after it wins the Kentucky Derby. <laughs> <laughs> so I, don't know. I was heard my dad, uh, you know, always uh, skeptical about the uh, integrity of horse racing. Oh, I don't, I don't, I don't know. I probably bad and paid attention to horse racing since American Pharaoh won the Triple Crown a few years ago. Yeah. But even then, I you, that sport's probably slowly going the way of the dodo. Really, the one thing propping it yeah. up at this point is the amount of money that's still gambled on it. There's still a lot of money that's gambled on that sport. A lot of money gambled on it, and uh, mm-hmm. the party and the the pit or whatever it's called. Oh yeah, the Preakness. Yeah. Oh god, that's Either, just a, any one of those. What a sight of depravity and do. Du- Botchery, yeah, the goonery. On this, yeah, uh, yeah, exactly. Unlike, <laughs> unlike any in America, there is no like you. I know college football, whatever yeah. else, NFL tailgates, like Buffalo Bills tailgates. No, go, oh my god, go to the uh, infield at the Preakness or or the Belmont. Yeah, yeah, uh, just savage. Um, okay, so what is the what's in store for us in the future now that? we're uh, a little more woke on how we should get yeah, we're more woke on things right <laughs> um i mean it, i mean in theory right everything kind of slowly gets more um loosened up um eventually as it is probably with marijuana it will be legal in every state probably well except for one um it'll be legal <laughs> in every state <laughs> What are uh, you referring to? <laughs> oh, I, I think everybody knows which one I'm talking yeah, about. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, it'll be legal everywhere, and then eventually the regulations will get loosened a little bit more and more and more and more until eventually, I mean, what it'll really be, um, at least as you can view it kind of in 2020, because I don't know where the, t- you know, obviously, I, I mean, all the computing power in the new Xbox console that's coming out this year was the same that was in like a 14 room, 200 tower server just <laughs> years ago. So 
you know, I don't, I don't know where the technology is going. Uh, another uh, tangent. Are you uh, Xbox or PS? Xbox. Xbox. Really? I've never had PlayStations. Yeah. Never even owned one. Nope. I knew, I knew you grew up in Seattle. You know, too many people who works for Microsoft. So sure, you, sure, you, sure. You buy the Xbox. I had a lot of. You buy the, you buy the Microsoft product. Um, Cause I can't afford a Boeing product. Uh, so, <laughs> so right now where it is, is betting on your phone, but I got like an app like a specific app right, right right that you can i can be you and i can be sitting at uh nhl seattle game whatever the team is not krakens i hope what do you mean um, you hope no i hope it's not we've had this you and i have had this discussion i'm I, fine with kraken i mean i'll go i'm gonna keep my season tickets i'm not gonna be happy about what do you it want it to be go. the soccer emeralds. guys emeralds, emeralds? Yeah, emeralds. I haven't heard anyone talking about it. Being I wanted emeralds. I wanted Metropolitan too, but nobody else. Oh, uh, I, I would be okay with that. I, that. So, I feel like it was going to be cracking like a hundred percent, and then yeah, and then like, pulled it back, back like backlash, like, like nope, oh, don't do that. Rum, people outrage. I'm scared. Oh, so it's Jerry. It's because Jerry Bruckheimer is one of the owners, and he produced Pirates of the Caribbean. So, mm-hmm. uh, but I, I right. So right now we could sit. I could sit and like right before puck drop, or even during the game, you can live bet on things um right. i can make a bet on my phone and right, right like there a, and do it right there in an app phone, you upload right. money and yep. you exactly have a draw off of a credit card and whatever else yeah and so i have a friend in fact who went to nevada he just went to las vegas for the day the day before the super bowl to make some bets he downloaded the westgate sports app and so every time he's in nevada so the i mean you have to have your location settings on and it can detect when you're inside state okay level. right and it will allow you to make bets on it um Seems so right, very straightforward exactly so right now that's where the tech is and i think for every state that doesn't have that yet that's what they'll go towards eventually um in states like washington where i kind of want to you're kind of so, feeling you're interested in keeping the tribes happy you're interested in keeping the tribal casinos happy um i doubt it will ever expand past allowing tribal casinos to develop their own app and to and right, allow real quick, you to download it. We have to be inside the tribal casino to... As of right now, yes. As of right... Well, as, as the bill is written that is yet to be made a law, you have to be inside the casino. To place to the that. bet, then you can go wherever. Place the bet then you can go wherever you want, watch it. But to place and, the bet, you have to be physically... And to collect, in, and to collect the money. And to collect the money. And to, well, sure. Okay, you have to, you have so. to be inside. So where it would go is an app. And in theory, the law would allow for, so the current law, the bill in Washington would allow you to develop an app, but again, you can only use it inside the casino. So the law expands to outside the casino, but on the tribal app. So that that way they're the ones getting the money, but you have to rewrite a law about where uh, gambling can take place because it's not on tribal land. So there's a whole mess of bureaucracy. So in some states like Washington, it's a lot more complicated. In states like California or Arizona, the border, Nevada, they're probably interested in allowing you to do that wherever you want. So they keep more of the money in-house, so to speak. They keep the money close. Uh, Colorado probably would consider something similar. And then again, like, you know, anywhere close to New Jersey. Uh, and then in the south, there are obviously a lot of casinos in Louisiana, Mississippi, uh, Alabama, Florida. Uh, they're going to be interested probably in allowing it wherever. So... Where it goes is is pretty much the model that you see most commonly in Canada and the UK and Australia, where you can just download an app and bet. Now, the difference, of course, in the in Canada, UK, and Australia, they don't have tribal casinos in those countries, so you can they they don't have to worry about the regulations surrounding that. Um, so I, eventually, that's where it goes. It's going to take time to get there. I don't know what the tech will be like in ten years, but it's probably going to be something similar to getting an app out on your phone. Making your bet and going that way. Losing. Yeah. No, yeah. No. <laughs> Look, man, those casinos don't get bigger because they're giving away money. That's why I always tell people. Like when I when I go to Vegas, I hope I win, but I take all that money down there knowing that if it's gone yeah. by the time I'm done, then it's you, gone. Yeah, you I'm, turn that I've been to Vegas probably ten to twelve times for a lifetime. I'm probably down about fifteen hundred dollars. It's not bad. And I'll take oh, it. That's not it bad. Fifteen hundred dollars worth of fun, and that's what I always say. Yeah. That's the exchange, right? It's like you know, if you're losing money, hopefully you're having some fun. 
Uh, and that's why also sports betting so is so appealing to me right off the bat. If I bet fifty dollars on a three hour football game, I get three hour, three hours of entertainment for my fifty dollars. If I lose my fifty dollars, you, you'd pay four times that to go to the game. Exactly. But if I win my bet, I get my fifty dollars back and I get my fifty dollars minus the juice. So yeah. you know, I, I think that, you know, in terms of the best money you can spend in gambling, it is the best money you can spend in gambling. Um, but no, yeah, they don't, they don't keep building more casinos cause they're losing money. <laughs> no, 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 no. Um, all right, let's, uh, shift the conversation to, uh, the winning money aspect of mm-hmm. sports gambling. Um, what, uh, I know there's people out there that, that can make some money off of it. Are, mm-hmm. are we talking making money off sports gambling like the poker players were able to make money playing poker? Yeah. I mean, you're not talking about a lot of people. Not a lot of people make a living on it. Uh, you got to be willing to commit a lot of time and a lot of math. I mean, there's a lot more math in it than a lot of people think. And there's keeping – I mean, it's the the encyclopedic sports knowledge that these – guys who sports bet for a living have is utterly insane. And your time, I mean, again, because, you know, like, like poker players that make a living, your bets need to be big because you need to be making money on these. And with sports betting, you have to be winning because of the juice the casino takes. You have to win 55% of the time, at least. And that's just to break even. So just to break even, you have to win 55. You have to be right more than half the time. Um, you know, it's not like blackjack where the house edge is in theory into the hundredths of a percent if you play it right. So you just need to be right 51% of the time to make money. The sports betting is different. So there are a lot of people who do try to make a living. I've had friends who've moved to Vegas. They've, you know, to get jobs and then do sports betting on the side to see if they can make money. And they all leave. They all leave. They all go back home and they start working again because it is really, really hard to be that dedicated to do it. I mean, you're, you, you, those guys who win daily fantasy, they have, I, they have spreadsheets. They have spreadsheets on spreadsheets on spreadsheets on spreadsheets of everything. And it, it takes a lot more work than a lot of people are willing to put in um, because it is a, it is a grind. It's an absolute, you're, you're betting on friggin' Brewers Marlins <laughs> in August because you gotta be, it's not, it's not just like, you know, like so many people have like this, idealized version of sports betting that it always involves like the NCAA tournament and NFL football and NCAA football. Like, no, you, you bet on baseball in the summer. You bet on hockey. You bet on all this other crap that you don't want to bet on. You bet on MLS matches. You bet on MLS matches. You bet on anything that they will give you a money line or a spread on because you, 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 Uh you, 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 you